Beginner Ravioli 3D Sculpting Tutorial. From the iPad to 3D printing, I'll show you the whole process. In American cuisine, when we think ravioli, we think Chef Boyardee. Open it up and try not to cut yourself. There's about an inch of red bland sauce. This ravioli is not that perfect. I'm looking for a great one to use as a reference. I inspect each and every single one and picked out the most perfect one. Took photos from every angle. I did not waste them and I ate them, regrettably. I import the photos into Procreate so I can sketch on top. I'm pretty much simplifying the important features of this ravioli which are those little nibbies at the end. Top view is finished so I moved it, import the photo of the side, get in the habit of sketching out your ideas because it creates a direction you want to go and also it's a great warm up for the mind. Open up Nomad Sculpt and collapse the menu on the right. In the symmetry menu turn on line. In objects tab, delete the sphere. Hit the plus icon to add a cube. Once in the scene, I can adjust the size and flatten it. Next, click validate. Turn on grid. In voxel remeshing menu, I want to increase the resolution. I usually do 300, but around 170 sounds good. Now we have a lot of little tiny squares. Tap the smooth brush and on the left side, I'll make it larger and make sure symmetry is on. With light pressure, round out the sides. I'll turn off the graph. I have the intensity turned down so I don't smooth it too fast. Corners look nice and beveled. Next, let's add a reference image in the background tab. You can see my past sketches here. Select the move tool. Wow, that's a little too powerful. I'll turn down the size. Pull the corners. I'm in the top view, so I pull the ruffles on the side to give it that ravioli-esque characteristic. I'm not sure what the origin country of raviolis are, but they're so good at Olive Garden. Inflate tool. I've seen to have only togged on the top, so I inflate the bottoms of those nibbies. With light pressure, I inflate and zoop. Now there is hella hecka bumps. A lot of bumps. Oh my god, so bumpy. More bumps than two weeks after prom. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. My bumps, my lovely lady bumps. Check them out. With the move brush increased, I tug on the corners and pull them out. And then I pinched in the sides. Now it's looking like a ravioli. To contrast all the round shapes, I use a flatten tool to flatten the corners. When I look at the bottom, the bottom is not totally flat. So I'll use a trim tool, rectangle, select, delete. With the grid on, you can see the geometry is all kind of messed up. All I have to do is tap the voxel remesh icon. It's a magic button that fixes everything. So you'll be using that button a lot. It's like the Dynamesh feature in ZBrush. With that round a cube in the corner, I could check it from all angles. Next tool you'll be using a lot is called masking. It's going to work like a paint brush and turn up the size and keep the intensity at 100%. The dark areas mean that nothing, no brush can affect that area. With the inflate tool, I turn up the size and inflate the meaty middle. I know this doesn't look very appetizing at all. It seems to be all crackling and everything. So I'm gonna hit voxel remesh, fixes everything and slice the top. I know what you're thinking. That doesn't look like a ravioli yet. It looks kind of stupid. Next, I'm going to grab the freehand trim tool. If you're sculpting in real life, it's like using the wire tool. And I move from every angle and cut it from different angles and to create that mound. With the grid turned on, eeks, it looks bad. Box will remesh. Some of those corners are a little too strong, so I use a smooth brush to smooth them all out from all different angles. This took me a while to figure out how to turn off the mask, select the mask tool, and hit clear. I'll go back to the smooth tool and smooth out the edges where the mask was before. I'm not sponsored by this app or anything, but it's like 14 bucks, which is way cheaper than ZBrush, which I pay like almost $300 a year for. I like that this app updates all the time. 3D art on the iPad doesn't sound crazy anymore. Next tool I use a lot is the clay tool. I'll turn up the size and I'll beef up the corners. You can see that it has like that clay-like rectangular texture. There are other 3D programs out there like Blender where you can model this within minutes, but it's not gonna have that sculpture-like-esque look. I'll smooth out that rough texture and I'll use a flatten tool to kind of smooth out the edges of the ravioli, ravioli ramps. The shininess of the object is getting to me, so I turn on Met Cap. It turns into the shiny gray metallic thing and it makes it easier for me to see more details. Ever so often, I tap that voxel tool and it remeshes my object. Smooth and voxel. Out of all the 3D softwares, I use this one the most because it's mobile and it's on my iPad, so I'll be making more tutorials because there are so very few online. I did not mask the bottom well, so there's a bump on the bottom, so I'm gonna have to slice it. I'm gonna use this line tool this time under the trim option. It's kind of squirrely, but we did it. Now the bottom is flat, voxel remesh. Sometimes I may have up to 30 different objects, even 50 objects in my scene, so I make sure I name my layers. I'll name this one top. Three dots, tap clone. Rename it, bottom. I even forget the name of my relative, so this is always a good idea. Around the holidays, usually it's like, hey you. On the bottom piece, I'm gonna slice the top of the mound because there's only a slight bit of meat coming from the bottom. The flatten brush, I'll flatten some of those sharp corners. 
keep it very sculpture-like. If you're new to 3D, your brain is going to get tired learning this program. Select a gizmo tool and click snap. When I rotate it, now it snaps every 90 degrees. Don't flip the table, flip the ravioli. Turn back on the top of the ravioli. That's the eyeball icon. I'll just move it down on the z-axis. It's supposed to be a ravioli, but in my mind, it looks like a cracker. The food kind. Another great feature I like is the turntable feature on the top left corner, turntable. It allows me to zoom out and see the object from different angles. Next, we'll work on the face with the standard brush. This was one of the first things I learned when I was playing around with this program. Click sub. This allows me to dig into the object. If I was a cartoon character, my mouth would be doing this all the time. Ooh, woo. From a different angle, that looks okay. To fix it, voxel remesh. Smooth brush to smooth some of those rough edges. Next is my favorite part, which has been a signature on my sculpture since the beginning. We're going to make an X. Let's add a cube into our scene. When you put a new object into the scene, the dots closest to the center, those are the ones that control both sides. See that green dot controls the top and the bottom at the same time? The one further away controls only one side. This is the perfect size, click validate. Click the gizmo tool, tap clone on the left menu. Make sure your snap is on and rotate. Yay, we almost have an X now. Let's merge the two shapes together. In object menu, select both. Click voxel. Check sharp corners. Bump up resolution. When you tap voxel merge, instead of two objects, you have now one object. The snapping is set to 90 degrees. Let's change that to 15 degrees. It feels like we're doing math. When I rotate it, it starts to click every 15 degrees. Now the gizmo is also diagonal. I don't like that. Click the lock button. This will unlock the gizmo, so I can rotate the gizmo. Once I have it back to normal, I click lock. Now it's locked in. Next, I position the eye where it wants to be. It's a little too big, so I'll size it down. And you see all those extra options around that, that sphere. Play with each one and see what each thing does. Go slow, and eventually you'll start to speed up with moving around your object around your scene. I tilt it to match the tilt of the ravioli. Now that I have one eye done, I wanna go to symmetry, click world, and left to right. That lets me mirror it. There's a problem. When I move one eye, both of the eyes move. In the objects menu, three dots, separate. Now that they're separated, we want to delete that marriage. Just like your parents, now they are fully separated, but they're still friends and they need to work together. I break apart the symmetry and each of the eyes, I give them a different tilt. I move them so they're not super symmetrical. The face is cute and super simple. So I go back to the mouth with the inflate tool. I add a little bit of extra details. I'll just plump them up a little bit. I hope I'm not failing by making this program seem more complicated than it is. It is kind of complicated, but it's, it's a lot of fun though, as you learn it. <laughs> now I can work on the small nuances of the object. You can see me turn off the symmetry here and there, and I start tugging on the different edges. Outside of quantum entanglement, nothing's really symmetrical in this world. Not even your own human face. Subconsciously, people are gonna pick up on things that are too symmetrical. Even testicles are not symmetrical. I even added a smirk to the mouth to match the testicle. Thing I just said. As I'm making this tutorial, I'm really emphasizing how many times I use that voxel remesh button. If you've been following me for a while now, you can see that lately I've been printing my models in two pieces and I like them to connect together with these cylinders. I didn't start doing this until I was already making like over a hundred sculptures on this program. Already this tutorial is like eight minutes long, so I'm gonna dedicate the next video just on this peg idea thing that I do. Quickly as a run through, I'll show you how I do it anyways. I duplicate both of the objects and I turn down the opacity on the top part. That's gonna be like my negative space, the whole part, the part that I want cut out of the top. And the size that I make these holes depends on the preciseness of the printers I use. I have a 4K resolution printer and I have an 8K resolution printer, so I make sure I keep that into account when I'm making these like negative spaces. I hope I didn't lose you, but that's like the basic gist of it. If you know this program, then that probably gives you an idea how to do it. This is just a sculpting part video, so I'm going to, in the next part, show you all of the whole process of how I prepare the files and print the files and process the files and all that. And then I can go even further and probably turn this ravioli thing into a real life business, art business, craft business. I'll show you everything.